Okay, welcome everybody to Fitter and Faster Live TV. Thanks for being with us today. I'll wait for a few more people to join us here. Looks like we've got about 50 people already online. Thank you for being here. Oh, wow, that jumped up quick. Okay. Welcome, everybody. My name is Brett Hawk. I am the director of swim camps and clinics at Fitter and Faster. And appreciate everybody being with us today. We've got a lot of people on, about 500 people right now joining us for this breaststroke tutorial. Um, one of my former swimmers, good friend of mine, uh, he's an SEC champion and he's a uh, legendary breaststroke for the Auburn Tigers. And uh, I'd like to introduce everybody to Michael Dudestart. So Michael, you can join us now if that's okay. Hey, Brad, how's it going? Good, buddy. How are you? Good. Doing it. Doing all right. Hanging in there. Now, where are you coming from today? Um, I am in sunny San Diego. Um, yeah, which we got pretty fortunate today. It's actually a sunny day. It's been um, been a little bit rainy here recently. So Okay. Now, how's the quarantine treat treating you? Yeah, um, I think all things considering, I'm doing all right. Um, you know, I think I'm kind of in the same position as everyone else, just trying to um, stay inside, um, make use of my time, make it, you know, efficient, try to, try to be creative in my time and, and coming up with new things to do. And, um, you know, working out is one of those things that's, um, trying to get creative with and, um, you know, all things considering, I think it's all right. Okay. Well, talk to us about your career real quickly at Auburn. You were an SEC champion. Um, tell us about your four years and how you did that. Yeah. Um, I had very fortunate enough to um, be recruited by you, Brett, um, and go to Auburn. Um, I grew up in Panama City, Florida to start. Um, swam for a club team called Panama City Swim Team, <clears throat> coached by Jonathan Kaplan. Um, and I actually, I think I have a little bit of a different story, a little bit different of a background. Um, I didn't start swimming until I was um, 14 years old, uh, um, going into high school. So uh, I grew up playing your traditional, more traditional sports, um, football and, and baseball. Um, and then, you know, my one of my best friends was trying out for the swim team and wanted me to join him. So I did. And, um, you know, I ended up loving it. Um, so ended up at Auburn. And um, I think I was just put in a great position um, for, for where I was to be successful. Um, you know, I was uh, just I think starting so late, I always felt like I was a little bit behind the curve um, and trying to catch up and catch up. Um, you know, in, in high school, I was trying to get, um, you know, a cut behind, you know, I'm, I'm uh, looking at all my swimmers around me, my teammates, my friends, they're getting, you know, junior national, national level cuts. And, um, you know, I'm trying to catch up to them. Um, and then going into freshman year at Auburn, we had um, just an awesome, awesome um, class to be surrounded by, awesome um, upperclassmen to look up to. Um, and so I, I think that just, you know, opened my eyes up to the possibilities um, and, and allowed me to be successful and, and find success um, swimming for Auburn. Cool. And what was what was the biggest uh, accomplishment, the, the thing that you can remember most and most proud of as a breaststroker at Auburn? Yeah, gosh, um, there's a lot of moments. I think um, the 200 breaths my junior year was certainly a highlight. Um, I, I think at SECs, it was just one of those moments. It was the last day. Um, you know, it's a five-day meet. You're just dead exhausted. Um, and, you know, I, I made finals. I think I seated third going into finals. And, um, you know, I was pretty just mentally drained. Um, and I remember Joe Patching had a turn backstroke, I believe, right before that. And um, and he won SECs. And um, it was just really kind of opened my eyes up and just got me excited for the 200 and ready to go. And then um, being surrounded by the, my team and everything um, just really woke me up and got me ready to go. So I think just being around the team and, um, you know, obviously winning was really cool and awesome experience, but I think more so just being around the team and, and that atmosphere was probably just one of my best memories. Yeah, you were definitely a team guy and somebody that um, got inspiration from your teammates but also gave gave back to them and gave them energy. So. Um, you're definitely a team guy. So talk, talk to what were your best times in a 50 breaststroke split, 100 breaststroke, and the 200 breaststroke? Oh, all right. Um, so don't fact, 
don't fact check me on this. Let's see. I, I think my best 50 breaststroke split um, on the relay was 23-2. Okay. Um, my best 100 breaststroke was 51-5. Mm -hmm. um, and my best 200 was 152-1. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Now, did you train primarily for the 200 or – were you a hundred swimmer who swam up to the two hundred? Um, I don't know. My my career at Auburn, I think, shifted so much. Um, you know, my sophomore year, obviously, you know, um, we had someone leave the team, so I was put in a position where, um, you know, I, I had to step up and join sprint group to to be on those freestyle relays. Um, mm. I think that kind of shifted my mindset to being more um, of, of a hundred breaststroker, um, and then. You know, going into my senior year, I, I think it kind of shifted again um, back into a more 100, 200 balance breaststroker. Yeah. Um, so I, I think I was to the advantage to kind of get it all right. Um, you know, I got I got a little taste of sprint group, which was great. Um, you know, people think they don't work hard in sprint group. But <laughs> let me tell you, it's difficult. Yeah. Um, so I think um, throughout just the entirety of my career, I, I think I got a really good mix of both and, um, would consider myself kind of a hundred, 200 guy. So talk to us just about the general differences, maybe mentally and physically, uh, of swimming a 200 as opposed to a hundred. What, what are the, what are the, what's the mindset and what are you trying to do technically that's different? Yeah. So the, the, the hundred, um, it, it's m much more of a sprint, right? Um, and for me, I'm someone who gets really excited. And when I get excited, I get tense. Right. Um, so the way that I look at the hundred is, um, a, a 25 relaxed and a 75 sprint. Um, and, and that way, mm. you know, that first 25, you still have that easy speed. You're coming off the block. You're still going to be fast. Um, but it gives you, um, just time to feel your stroke, um, get into that hundred rate. Um, which is, is one of the big differences as opposed to a 200, right? Um, and then moving into a, a 200 mindset, um, for me, it was just really, I, I think, being relaxed for the first 75. Um, so you add a 50, and you really just want to feel your stroke for that first 75. You're naturally going to be fast based on your environment, your racing, you have people around you. Um, so being able to feel your stroke um, and maintain that little bit longer stroke length at timing in the 200, um, I, I think it's a, a big game changer and something that's really important to focus on just because, you know, it's easy as as um, as a swimmer to jump in for a 200. Um, you know, you look around you, you see who you're racing, you see what's going on, maybe there's pressure at a swim meet, and you just jump in you just want to go. Um, but I, I think as a swimmer, like trusting the process, I'm sure everyone's heard it a million times, um, being able to trust the process and not just an overall season process, but also you have to look at a 200 um, being able to trust that, you know, where you, you, you know, the work that you've done, you know, the training you've put in. So, um, you know, at the end of this 200, you're going to be just as, just as good as you are at the beginning of the 200. Okay. Now, would you say that you are more natural with your catch or with your kick? Um, I would say my catch. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think my catch just because growing up, um, not a swimmer, I think I had to develop a lot of that flexibility, um, in the breaststroke kick. Um, and that I think the catch just comes a little bit more natural, um, just with swimming. I think it's, you know, the breaststroke catch is very similar to, um, a freestyle or, um, butterfly or really even backstroke, right. Um, feeling that water and the way that you're, you know, high elbows, same ideas, um, throughout all four strokes, whereas, you know, the breaststroke kick is, as everyone knows, it's difficult and it's just unlike anything else that you do. Yeah. Well, I want to get into uh, each component a little bit. I want to talk about the kick. I want to talk about the catch, but also want to talk about the hips in relation to breaststroke because there is timing. I think timing is an important component of breaststroke, right? And it's something I'm sure that you worked on a lot and, and the breaststroke is sitting at home right now. Um, sometimes you feel like your timing is out. Maybe you can talk about some things that you did to help your timing um, and that sort of thing. But let's start off by just looking at a video of um, some vertical kick breaststroke. Uh, this is a video of 
one of your ex training partners, Felipe Lima, who is a uh, one of the fastest breaststrokers in the world. And I'll just get you to kind of talk us through what you're seeing in this video. Awesome. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to train alongside of Felipe, and it was just unreal some of the things that he can do in practice and, and trying to emulate those things. Um, so when we're looking at, at the kick from a hole, um, really I, I start and I envision it with, um, with two aspects, right? The aspect where you're actually physically kicking the water, right? Your propulsion um, and everything after that, all you're doing is really slowing yourself down, right? As you bring your feet up, um, you're creating drag. Yeah, so let's go into into the propulsion aspect. Um, first off, what we see Felipe doing really well is Brett. Can you pause the video um, when he's at the top of his kick? See if we can. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a try. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, so the the first thing we see is uh, look at Felipe the way his feet are. Right, we can see his feet are almost. Um, 90 degrees to the bottom of the pool facing straight out, right? And, and um, if you catch it at the very top, it's exactly straight out, right? So what he's doing there, as soon as his feet come up, his, his feet turn out and his flexibility there and his ability to get all the way 90 degrees is allowing him to use his entire foot surface to catch that water, right? Um, so it, it's, it's almost like if you take your hand in your um, arm pull, right? If you're 90 degrees pulling down here versus pulling here, right? You're going to catch a lot more water here. Same, same what we see with um, Felipe's feet there. He's able to turn his feet out and begin that catch of water, right? Mm -hmm. The second part of the propulsion is as he's driving his feet down, they get faster and faster and faster, right? So we see him catching water, and as he starts to propel his feet, pushing water, pushing water. He's pushing water all the way until his feet come together, right? And I think that's the most important part of the breaststroke kick. Um, something that I always tried to emulate from Felipe, he does it so well, um, is finishing his kick into that whipping action, right? You see how flexible he is and how fluid it is? It doesn't seem forced. It seems really easy, um, which I can, I can attest to. It is very easy for, for Felipe, right? And see how quickly he's able to, to snap his feet, drive them together, and finish, right? So he's, he's taking that water from the very top. The second he turns his feet out, pushing it um, all the way until his feet come together and snapping them, snapping them together. And um, for all you young breaststrokers out there, if you can work on one thing every day in practice, I would say it's finishing the kick um, because you're going you're gonna to have a lot of pro propulsion from the first – 90% um, of your kick, but that last 10% of your kick is really going to make the difference moving forward into in, to working into elite levels of kicking. And right. Duda, one of the things I'm noticing there is he's keeping his knees relatively stationary. I mean, he's he's turning his legs, but his knees aren't pulling up to his chest, and they're not going out either real wide. If you look at his knees, we'll look at it one more time. He keeps them um, pretty stationary. So uh, why is he doing that? Right. So so that kind of brings us into the, the second um, portion of, of bringing our feet up together, right? Um, so after he's finishing his kick, he's driving his feet up. You see his feet stay behind his knees the entire time. And, and as Brett said, his legs are staying under his body, under his hips, um, or in line with his hips. If we were swimming breaststroke, we'd be in line, right? Um, and so what we're doing there is eliminating drag, right? So Felipe has incredible flexibility from his knee through his hip to be able to bring his feet back instead of being able to, instead of driving his knees up, right? So whenever we're, um, whenever we're kicking breaststroke, the second we bring our knees up and break any sort of body line, that we have with our feet, right? If we can imagine these are our legs um, and we bring our, our knees up, we're breaking that body line and we're really creating drag and just making it harder for ourselves as breaststrokers um, to, to use that easy speed um, from the previous kick, mm -hmm. right? Um, so keeping that line, you notice when he starts to bring his feet up, they don't come up slow, right? He um, His feet shoot up, 
right? Because again, that's all he's doing there is slowing himself down. You're actually working against yourself to bring your heels up. So watch as he speeds up and gets faster in this kick. Watch how quickly he, he uh, brings his, his heels to his butt right here, right? See how quickly he's bringing them up. He's eliminating as much drag as he can um, by keeping it, his hips and his knees in line and, um, and speeding those feet up, up to his butt before going into that, that really good catch that he has. Yeah, one of the things I noticed there too, like you said, he brings his feet up fast and whips them back fast, and it's like a you know a piston. And, and you know, you notice people like Adam Peaty and Lily King, they don't seem to be doing the traditional big you know pull up slow and then drive back fast and hold their line and then pull up slow. It seems to be more of that short whipping up fast back fast. Um, more propulsive speed in the feet these days, right? Right, and and I, I think that really that stems from um, if we watch that video again, you can see Felipe's knees are it's almost like someone tied a string around his knees, right? And, and he's kicking directly from his knees, right? See how well they stay in line with his body, mm. um, whereas a, a more traditional, more powerful kick, um, you know, you're really bringing your breaking your line and bringing him out. Um, even more so than, than it looks like Felipe is there, right? Um, but it just makes it quicker, and I think it just makes it more efficient to be able to whip your feet around. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas if we try to use too much power, especially when you get into more of that long course swimming, um, you know, the more power you use, the more energy you use, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it, it gets harder to finish races if you're trying to just be too powerful and, and too strong. Um, you almost fight the water versus um, letting the water work for you. Yeah, that's a good point. Where did you feel it in a 200 breaststroke in your legs? Like what part of your legs burn the most at the end of a 200? Um, I, I think for me, it was always uh, my quads. Um, just from trying to um, finish that kick, right, to you know, from bringing your knees up to your butt and extending them down, right, it's really heavy on your quad muscles. Um, and then whenever you, you know, finish your kick, you want to hold them there, especially in a 200 to find your line. Mm. Um, so to, to keep that line as tight, as tight as possible, it's squeezing those quads. And, um, I, I think that's just for me where, where it always burned the worst. So you did a lot of kick training in practice, right? To make sure those legs were very, very fit. Yeah, a lot. Um, and I'll still never forget waking up every Wednesday morning, um, junior year, we did those. 2100s or 3100s every Wednesday morning um, kick. And I, I think that was really when um, it opened my eyes to uh, breaststroke kick, right? Um, I, I mean, I swam breaststroke freshman and sophomore year and in high school. Um, but, you know, I, I never really focused on it, especially in high school. Um, I really wasn't a breaststroker until college, right? Um, and so I, I would always mix up my kicks. I always do flutter kicks, dolphin kicks, and kicking sets. Um, and, and that set really just opened my eyes up to how bad of a kicker I was and, and how much I needed to improve to, you know, take my breaststroke to the next level. And so it took you basically a whole season of kicking, you know, 3,100s every Wednesday, plus all the other stuff you were doing in practice to, to really improve your kick, right? Right, right. And that's coming from uh, two different ways. I think the kick is a lot of feel, right? Um, you, it's one of those things you can't just do and, and you know, be, be decent at it. And really that's anything, but um, you have to really feel the water and feel how your feet, um, like where your flexibility is at as an individual swimmer, um, you know, how well you're able to, to whip those feet together um, and, and make those minor adjustments and learn from each, each session and, and figure out where you're at as an individual. Yeah. All right, let's look at another drill, and you can talk us through this one as you see it. Yeah, so, so two kicks underwater um, going into one pool. Um, this is actually one of my favorite uh, breaststroke drills of all time, right? Um, and – my favorite part about this drill is you really have to learn how to move through the water um, efficiently with, with your singularity of your kick, right? Um, how to position your head, how to position your hips, um, 
and and keep that body line right. Um, in, in breaststroke, it's really important that we find a good body line right as soon as we finish our kick. We want to be as streamlined as possible, right? To to maximize the propulsion from that kick, right? Um, so so that's one reason I really like this drill. But what we see Felipe doing so well here is not only the kick that we've talked about, but you see if you pause it here, Brett, um, as soon as he finishes his kick, watch his body line and look how straight he is, right there. Um, trying to get this. Trying to get a. Pinpoint for you. Yeah, no worries. It's not, it's not hard. Um, so, so we can see how straight um, and how narrow, and it's just like his streamline when he pushes off the wall. Felipe is right there is perfect because um, this highlights a couple things. So, so we can see his head is in line with his shoulders, um, just like he would be in, in streamline. Only in breaststroke, you know, you don't have your hands over the top of each other. Um, you know, you know, at, at, at each other's side. So his head's in line with his shoulders and his um, chest, right? His hips are in line with his shoulders, down to his knees, down to his toes, right? So he's really maximizing the potential speed that he can get from that breaststroke kick, right? Mm -hmm. The other reason I like this video is whenever we see Felipe finish his kick and whip his feet together, um, we, we see what his hips do, right? His hips turn up, right? A lot of times in breaststroke, we start when we get tired and we start to kick, we're not, we don't kick our hips to the surface and we start to swim breaststroke like this, which I'm mm. sure Brad has seen me do just too many times in practice. <laughs> right. So when he's kicking, he's figuring out how, how to leverage that propulsion to get his hips up and he gets, um, I, I like to say over the stroke. Right. So he, he's in, I guess you could say this kind of position, um, when he's going to kick, when he finishes his kick, he gets over his stroke into a, a body line like this on the surface of the water or just under, right? Yeah. yeah. I think that's the thing is we, we want we want to be going forward. We don't want to be going up. You know, a lot of breaststroke I see sometimes is like that way where really good breaststroke is almost dolphin-like where it's here and then here. You're always pressing forward, right? Mm-hmm. And if we can go back to that video, Brett, and pause it when he um, when Felipe takes a stroke, um, I, I think it's one of the things that I didn't do so well in breaststroke there. Um, and and I think the right there's perfect. The world's best breaststrokers um, are, are doing this right. So what we see here is we can see Felipe's hips at the surface, and we see his feet at the surface, right. And what we just talked about is trying to stay in that straight line. Um, watch how well he does to keep his hips at the surface when he takes his stroke with his arms, right? So he, when he takes his stroke, we'll see his hips are at the surface. His knees are behind his hips and his feet are also at the surface, right? So he's trying to stay in as flat of a line he can when he takes that breath, right? Even though he's really breaking his body line to come up and take that breath, Mm. Uh, he's still the lower half of his body really from his chest to his feet are staying in as straight of line as he can. Right. And that's also, he's not dropping his hips when he takes his breath. Right. So as breaststrokers, a lot of times what you see is as you go, you catch water and you pull up, you're pulling up more than forward. And what that does is your head goes up, your hips go down. Let's watch here. He takes his breath and he pulls himself forward, right? There's perfect. And he's driving his feet to his butt at the surface of the water versus being too far under the water, which mm -hmm. would create his, him to swim at a yeah. vertical. Instead of his legs dragging as he takes that breath, he, he tilts so his body's in line. Even though he's up out of the water here, he's taking his breath, but everything else is lined up at the surface as well so that he's skimming across the surface of the water. Exactly. And, and it keeps your hips high. So going into holding your line, your hips are at the surface of the water. Um, that means your head and your upper body are also at the surface of the water. Um, and what that does is when you go to take your next stroke, you're not trying to dig out from underwater. You're not too deep underwater and trying to dig yourself out of the water. You're already at the surface. You just, it's a lot smoother going into to each stroke. All right. We'll look at this one more time. Yeah. See how well he keeps his hip at, hips at the surface. Uh, looking straight down too. Yep. Yeah, obviously in this show, uh, Felipe is going a little bit deeper um, just to get those three kicks in underwater. 
Um, but other than that, he stays at the surface when he's taking his stroke. And it's just really phenomenal the things that he can do with his lower body and upper body and keep that body line. Let's have a look at uh, another favorite drill of mine. Uh, this is actually upside down underwater breaststroke. This is just one that uh, I threw in there for a little bit of fun. I like this. Yeah, this was – I didn't do this drill until um, – I got to Auburn actually, and it ended up being one of my favorite drills. Um, and I still do it if I go swim and I'm trying to trying to figure out how to swim breaststroke again. Um, one of my favorite drills. And um, my favorite part about this drill is for, you're just putting yourself in a different position, right? And that was one of my favorite parts about swimming under you, Brett, is, is um, a lot of untraditional, uncomfortable feelings, right? And, and you learn how your body floats, how your body reacts. Um, and you learn how to move in the water in, in unconventional ways. Um, and, and that just all adds to um, kind of your swimming IQ. Right? Yeah, I love how he finishes his kick here too. His right. Toes, points his toes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we see here, again, his body line is incredible. Um, when he, when he finishes his kick, as you said, he's, he's whipping his feet together. Um, and you can see when he brings his feet together, they're a little bit above his hips. Um, and as soon as they touch, they come back into line with his hips, right? You see them, they float a little bit down, back to line with his hips, right? The other thing that this drill teaches um, is really how to be efficient in the water. Um, as I said, with the, the breaststroke kick, um, there's a point where you're really just creating negative energy for yourself and bringing your feet up. Um, same with your arms, right? When you're, after you pull with your arms, right? All you're doing is, is pushing water. You're not actually creating any um, speed with the recovery portion of your arms, right? So what that drill does, um, it allows you to really see and feel how you move in the water and how you can be more efficient um, with your arms and your legs um, at, at those points of, um, of negative speed, right? I'll watch one more time here. Yes, I love, I love his body line. Even though he's upside down, he just holds his line. His head's in the right spot. His chest, his back is flat. It's a really beautiful line. Yeah, and, and can we play this one more time? And I want everyone to watch um, his heels, right? When I say finish your kick, um, I, I don't mean finish your kick to where your your knees are under your hips, right? You want to you wanna finish your kick to where your heels are touching, right? See how Felipe, Felipe drives his heels together? Um, it's not that he's bringing his toes to touch here. Right? He's completely bringing his heels together. So all that water that he's catching um, from his, his wide-angle feet all the way down through his heels instead of just bringing his toes together. So right? he's pushing the water back and then accelerating and propelling his body forwards, right? Exactly. All right, let's look at the same thing um, on his stomach. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, so similar drill, uh, learning how your body how your body moves, right? Um, and this, I think it's a lot more powerful to look at our arms and, and talk about our catch, right? So when we watch Felipe's arms here, um, and when he catches that water, well, it's almost like a butterfly catch, right? <clears throat> he has a high elbow, right? Um, I, I think a lot of times, um, just in breaststroke, a lot of the notion is, all right, all I'm doing with my arms is trying to get a breath, right? Um, and that's actually not true, right? So we, we see him rounding his corners and getting that high elbow catch, right? And actually propelling himself forward with that high elbow catch um, before, he, before he moves to the arm sweep um, and the breath portion of the catch, right? So, um, and I, I guess that kind of brings us into the catch part, right? Um, so as, as he sweeps out, he grabs that water. He's actually pulling himself forward. Um, and if we, he were at the surface, he would be pulling himself forward, pulling himself forward before he actually starts the in-sweep, breaks the surface, and, and goes into that breath portion um, and shoots his hands forward. Um, Brett, so can we, can we watch that again and watch Felipe's high elbows in that catch? Yeah. Yeah, so his whole body stays in a great line. And watch his, his elbows, from his elbows to his hands. 
just a really good high elbow catch, almost like he's swimming butterfly. He's dri- uh, driving that water. And, um, you know, one of the things that I, I think is, is really a powerful statistic is I was talking with Felipe one day after practice and we were talking about um, just – some uh, kinesiology study that was done on Adam Peaty. And what they found is, um, you know, the notion around breaststroke is that all your propulsion comes from your kick, right? But they, what they found with Adam Peaty is that he's actually creating as much propulsion um, with his arms to drive himself forward as he is with his kick, right? So um, if you're going into it with a mindset of it's really just your kick that's propelling you forward, um, you know, you're already half as good as as the field that is trying is u- utilizing their arms to drive themselves forward and mm-hmm. get that extra speed. Yeah, he's catching a lot of water under there. Mm-hmm. And again, as we talked about before, we see his his knees stay um, almost in in line as possible um, with his hips and his chest. He's not dropping his knees and creating drag. Um, and I, I think that also just shows a really good point of view from um, from Felipe driving his feet out and catching that water. Yeah, I got a couple more videos that I wanted to show for fun. Some drills that we did. Maybe some maybe some kids at home watching have never done these. This is an underwater breaststroke turn off the bottom of the pool. I know we like to do these a lot at Auburn. Yep. Yeah, and I like to. Um, do a, a couple of these at, at fitter and faster camps. And um, again, it's, it's really figuring out um, how your body moves underwater and, and how you can maximize the speed of your turn. Um, that's one thing I worked a lot with once I got to Auburn is, um, you know, I was very singular minded if I want to swim faster and then I swim faster. Um, and when I left Auburn, I would say that I was a much better swimmer, but I, got so much better on my details um, and that's my turns and my pullouts. And, and that's really why I think my, my short course breaststroke um, really evolved so much throughout my time at Auburn is, is focusing on these little details and um, you know, these minute, minute changes um, to really enhance, you know, over a, a 200 breaststroke. Yeah. One of the reasons why I like to do underwater turns is because you're fully, immersed and there's uh, maximum resistance right you're getting resistance from everywhere anytime you move your arms or legs you try to bring your knees up it's being pulled against the water so i love those turns where you have to try and figure out how to get small to minimize the resistance even when you're fully submerged underwater right and it also it also keeps you engaged you know how easy is it to go into a wall and do the same turn that you've done you know every day for 10 years of your life. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and even, even getting better at, at just a normal turn, you really have to mix it up and, and engage yourself in things like this, because as you said, it, it makes you think about every movement you make and how you can be better at it. All right. I think there's one more video. Maybe let's have a look. I think this might be just a pull out. Maybe let's have a look at the pull out. I just like the patience that he takes with his pull out patient there patient there and then patients there through the breakdown. Right. And, and um, one of the things I like there is we saw him push off at, um, you know, towards the bottom of the pool and angle out. As soon as he started to pull, he angles out and comes up here. Mm. Right. A lot of things that a lot of time, um, you know, breast surgers think that they're just going to push off, move through the water um, and, do their pull out and come to the surface. But really what we can do and um, is we push off at a downward angle. It's like taking a kickboard, right? You take a kickboard underwater and you um, just let go of it. And it's just going to float to the surface, right? The, the water tension, the, the surface tension is going to pull you up, right? It sucks you in almost, right? But if we come in and we take a kickboard and we angle it just a little bit, then what's going to happen? It's going to shoot out of the water, right? So the same thing on our pullout is that's what we're trying to accomplish, right? So if we just push off the wall at a straight angle once and we complete our pullout and we get to the surface of the water, then the surface is going to actually pull us to the water. Uh, excuse me. The surface is going to drive us up, right? Mm-hmm. It's going to, um, you know, mess with our breakout, right? But if we push off at um, a negative angle and allow ourselves – 
just like just like the kickboard to shoot um, to angle ourselves out of the water, then we're actually going to be able to maintain that speed um, and, and drive break out with a lot more speed um, and a lot more um, tempo. And that's going to make it a lot easier going into each of the following strokes as we as we go forward. All right. So the last thing to uh, do before we go into some questions, I'm going to open up the chat room in a minute to questions. So be ready for some questions here. But um, just in terms of timing, uh, were, were there times where you felt like your rhythm and your timing of your breaststroke might have been out? And what are the things that you did to help with that? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll start with timing is I, I think breaststroke is such an interesting stroke because, um, you know, my timing and Felipe's timing will never be the same. Um, you know, people can go the exact same time and swim breaststroke two completely opposite ways. Um, so, so timing is really one of those things that you have to play with and you have to feel out um, and you have to learn how, it, how your timing works for your breaststroke, right? Um, so I think for, for me, timing, you know, every season after taking, you know, a short break, um, and trying to get back into breaststroke, um, for me, timing was always an issue. Um, and, and for me, I felt like it always took a lot longer to get back into that rhythm and that timing. Um, so I did a, a couple different drills that I always liked, and I would do them at the beginning of the season. I would do them, um, you know, in neat warmups, um, just to reset my timing and, and um, you know, remind myself where I needed to be. Um, and the first one was just the simple two kicks, one pull, right? Um, we watched Felipe doing it. Um, I, I just really like being able to, um, you know, feel my propulsion of my kick when I need to go into my arm pull, um, feel how my body is moving underwater, right? Um, so I think that's my first one. And then my second one is, um, we called it accordion. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially you just take your, your thumbs and you lock them, right? And I don't know if I can scoot back far enough. But essentially, you're here, right? And all you're doing is, if, if I'm floating on the surface of the water right now, I'm bringing my uh, my thumbs to my head. And once I get my thumbs to my head, I'm bringing my feet up and I'm kicking my feet forward, right? So that's all I'm doing. And, I, and I'm kind of playing with my timing, figuring out what feels right, what feels wrong. Um, and, and I would do that for um, yeah, practice during, you know, getting back into the season. Um, and then, and then meet warmups as well. Um, and then another, another one that I really liked is, um, two or one, right, one left, and then a breaststroke, right? So, um, a single arm butterfly to the right, single arm butterfly to the left, and then a full breaststroke stroke. And that just, um, it kind of, for me, it always reset me getting back into that, um, flow of breaststroke, right? A lot of times, um, you get caught up in breaststroke being just, pull, kick, pull, kick. But um, that, that really just reset my mindset of being in that flow of breaststroke um, and keep keeping moving forward. Yeah. One of the questions I saw in there is like breaststrokers get sore knees. Obviously, there's a lot of pressure that you put on your knees. What are some of the things you did to, um, to help your knees over time? Yeah. Um, breaststroke is all about flexibility. Um, so stretching it as much as possible. Um, it, that's, I think, the biggest thing that will help, especially um, at a younger age before you really start developing those, those large muscles and, and lifting a lot of weights um, while you're still fairly flexible. Um, and if you are flexible, that doesn't mean that you can't be more flexible, right? Um, so I would say stretch as much as possible. Um, always make sure you're warmed up before you go into breaststroke. I know for me, um, I would always like to do at least some sort of like flutter kick or or dolphin kick before I went straight into, you know, any kind of fast breaststroke or really just like a breaststroke kick at all. Um, just to, to warm the knees up, warm the body up, um, and then maintain loose and then stretching a lot. What are, what are like two stretches you would do for your legs? Um, I was always big on um, runner stretch. Um, so having your um, feet spread out and then just touching the ground um, and let gravity, gravity do the work. Um, you know, go left, go right. That really stretches the inside um, groin and then um, the uh, the quad going into that knee area. Um, and then just butterfly stretch. Um, you know, that that also is a, a big breaststroker stretch is, um, you know, sitting on your butt, bring your feet together, trying to get them as close as, as 
your feet as close to your butt as you can and, um, you know, just letting gravity do the work again and, and um, being relaxed. Okay. All right. Good. Well, I'm trying to look at some of these questions. Can you see the questions there, Duda? Um, I can't. Let's see if I can open up the chat window. Yeah, click on chat. Here we go. Let's see. Uh, I saw one about the breath. When you come up for a breath, how high are you pulling your head up for the breath? Are you staying low? Or are you you talk to us about the breath itself? Yeah. So um, I, again, that I think that varies from breaststroker to breaststroker, um, and I, I think for me it was really learning how I could keep my body in line as much as possible and taking that breath. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously, when you go to take your breath. You want to keep your head neutralized with your shoulders, right? You don't want to throw your head back, right? Because if you throw your head back here, then your hips are sinking, right? Mm -hmm. But you also don't want to stay too low in driving forward because then you get so caught up. You really, your only option is to just force yourself through the water if you're too low, mm -hmm. right? So finding that comfortable medium um, and keeping your head in line with your shoulders when you come up to take a breath. Um, if you think about it, you want your head – um, you want to drive forward with the crown of your head, right? Not, not your face, because if you drive forward with the crown of your head, um, then that's going to allow you to take that breath and then um, throw your head down back into the water, back into your line, um, and get over the stroke, as, as we talked about before. Now, would you count your strokes in the 100 and 200 as well? Um, yeah, so I did, I did both. Um, I was more of a timing swimmer, right? So, um, from the second I started swimming breaststroke, um, my, my club coach, Jonathan Kaplan would, um, taught me just 1001 for a hundred and then 1001, 1002 for a 200, um, just the most basic you can, you can get. And as I developed my breaststroke and, um, changed things, um, that's really what I try to think about in 100 and 200. I didn't try to think too much about um, my temp, um, my how many strokes I was taking. Um, so for uh, for my 100, it was just as soon as my um, hands were out in front and I was in my line, it was 1,001, and I would go into 1,001, 1,001, 1,002, and then for my 200, I was just as soon as my hands hit one, two, and then go into your next stroke one, two. Um, and I think with that, it, you know, it keeps your tempo the same. So it's going to eventually keep your stroke count the same. Um, so you kind of learn both ways. Um, but for me, I like to focus more on, on my tempo. Okay. All right. Just uh, give us a, some shout outs of some names that you read here. Just. Yeah. Danny, Danny, I saw Danny, um, Fraser Scott. Let's see. Charlotte LePage. I wish I could stop this chat to be able to see these questions. Um, <laughs> What are some of the workouts I'm doing during quarantine? Um, really just staying creative. I think that was one of my favorite parts about swimming under Brett and something I've been able to translate into um, now being stuck is like just finding anything and everything um, and use it as a workout, you know, just play with it and figure out how you can um, use it to better your catch. In college, I used to have a little stretch band and I would, um, I would just take it and I would just work here. I would go to class and I would, I would sit in class and go like this. Um, it's just working a different part of your stroke, different muscles that you normally would. Um, so just get creative with anything you have in the house, to be honest. Um, I think it, it could be good to take a, a little break and, um, you know, um, do some different workouts and different fitness levels. Yeah. Um, you know, listen, uh, Fitter and Faster is looking forward to getting back with some clinics with everybody. In the meantime, at the end of this week, I believe we've put up well, – we would have done about 40 – uh, live webinars, which you can find on the fitterandfaster.com website. You can go back and look at the uh, couple of webinars that we've done over the past four weeks. Uh, we really appreciate Michael Dudastar being here with us today talking about breaststroke, um, and there's many others that you can look at. We also have uh, swimvideos.net. You can go there and sign up for our um, video series where we break down breaststroke there's a lot of drills and skills that we haven't talked about today that are on those videos so sign up for those and check those out but otherwise i know that uh you and i do that we're really looking forward to getting back to some clinics right yeah i can't wait to be back with you guys and hopefully that's sooner rather than later um but in the meantime you guys just stay safe stay inside stay active any way you can um don't worry it's not the end of the world um that you're not swimming you're not in the water um, you know, take a break, enjoy it, be active, 
um, and just um, you know have have as much fun as you can. But but definitely looking forward to being back with you guys. All right, buddy. Well, listen, take care. Good to see you, and uh, we'll catch up soon. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Brett, and thank you, everyone. You guys take care. Bye, everybody.